All righty. Welcome, coaches. Hopefully, everyone is connected to audio. I hope. I'll give it another like five seconds and then I will introduce Danny. Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to the first session of OBA's 12 Days of Swish Mist. I always mess that up, so I'm glad that I said that right this time. Featuring Carlton Women's Head Coach, Danny Sinclair. So Danny is a former CIS player who was named the Rookie of the Year at McMaster and was also a three-time OUA All-Star, winning a national championship with the University of Victoria in the 2002-2003 season. Since then, Danny has been a member of the Victoria Vikes coaching staff as an assistant mm -hmm. before being named the head coach of the Vikes in 2012. Under her leadership, get this, the Vikes have never missed the playoffs and she has accumulated a 105 and 59 record, the fourth most wins in team history. Danny is an inspiration to young female coaches and players who are looking to transition into coaching as she continues to reach new heights. Tonight, Danny will be speaking about simple offensive skills and concepts. Also, I don't know if you guys can see the chat function. I hope you can. So if you have any questions that come up, please drop your questions in the chat and we can hopefully get to them at the end of the presentation. Okay, coach, take it away. Thank you very much. And thanks for everybody who's, uh, who's here. I think as we go along, um, if you if people want to jump in, I know at, at the moment we don't have a, a very large group, so um, please ask questions as we go along, and and uh, I uh, it may flow a little bit better if if we do it that way. I'm gonna I have I have kind of a plan of how we'll go along, and I'd I'd like to show some clips, um, some video to to. Uh, make it a little bit more exciting to watch. Um, but yeah, we'll get started. So I'm going to share my screen. And so I, I wanted to, um, I wanted to talk about simple skills and concepts of offense. I think it, in my coaching career, I've come a, almost full circle I'm in my 10th year as a head coach now at the U sport level and uh, have come around to, to the idea of simple is better. I think when I first started, when I was coaching at the high school level, uh, youth level, and, then, and, and when I first started as a university coach, um, I often would overcomplicate um, things or run way too many sets. Um, and we were rather than, than being really good at a few things, uh, we could, we could, um, we could score against medium to like average to medium teams, but then come playoff time or, or when we were playing the best teams, we would have trouble. Um, uh, and now uh, especially in the situation we're in now. So I've, I've been out West. I was, as, as was mentioned, I was at UVic for a number of years and now in the OUA, um, you know, we're, we're playing against and going to be playing against a lot of the best teams in the country on a nightly basis. And uh, sort of the tricks that I, I used to try to employ don't, don't work against the best team. So it, it takes a lot of, uh, you have to be very precise in the simplicity, but um, you know, it's, it's the direction that I've gone um, as a coach and it still requires having, at the end of the day, um, it has to be player driven. You have to have, the, have very good skilled players. So we'll talk about co concepts um, and, and a plan first and then get deeper into some of what some of those skills are. So first question to ask when, we, when we're thinking about offense is, is what is your plan offensively? And it has to align with the players that you have. Uh, we try to play at Carlton, we try to play with a lot of pace. Um, we, we talk about getting the ball when we get possession, we want to get the ball from um, to the, to the opposite three point line in three seconds. 
um, and we want every, we want to start our offense. We want everybody in position in five seconds. Um, depending on the, the athletes that you have, that may or may not work. But for us, that's the, the pace that we want to play at drives a lot of what we, what we want to do. Uh, the next question to ask is what, what types of shots do you want to get and where? So, um, you know, obviously high percentage shots, we want to get the ball at the rim um, and we want to get uh, long closeouts for people to get either wide open shots on the perimeter at, at th the three or be able to, to attack and get into the paint. Um, but along with that is, and this, this is where I've gotten out of, of running too many sets and simplifying things so that we know exactly who's taking what type of shots or who's taking the shots that we want to take. So the more simple we are, uh, the easier it is for us to get people the ball that we that get our best players, the ball in the best spots to be able to, to attack. Um, and, and when do we want these shots to be taken? So, um, the way we play, so I'll just use this as an example. Like we, we allow, if we are able to get a stop, so if we defensively rebound or if we get a steal, um, it's, it's almost like rewarding your players to not have to run a set. We will allow them to, to get to space and play. And I'll, I'm going to show some, some clips of that in a, in a minute. Um, so we have very specific roles about where players need to be and what lanes they're running. So um, that we can get the ball up the floor quickly, get the, get the people that we want in certain spots to then be able to attack. Um, and we're, we're trying to find the best shot um, and, and, but have the ball in the right people's hands. Uh, we will then, if, if we don't get a stop, so either if we get scored on or on a dead ball, we still want to get the ball up the floor quickly. So we talk about getting the ball to the three point line in three seconds still, if we're not being pressured. Um, but then from, so, and, and trying to flatten out and, and allow, uh, our, our ball handler to be able to attack and play attack in space. But, um, from there we can then flow into a set. Um, and then if we get, if we get late clock, then we're trying to get the ball into our best player's hands uh, to be, to be taking, you know, either, either getting into the paint um, to be able to get a shot for themselves or create a long closeout for someone else. Um, and if we're taking you know, we're taking it, we want to get shots at the rim or at the three, as mentioned. And if we're taking a jump shot, it's with our best player in the last under three seconds. So phases of offense. Um, I mean, we, I think the way the game's being played this, you know, that this day and age, there's like with the short, uh, you know, 24 second shot clock, very fast paced game. There's, you know, we look at, we look at the offense in, in, you know, kind of two and then two phases with obviously offensive rebounding being being an aspect of that. So you're either attacking and transitioning, attacking attacking in transition, or attacking in the quarter court. So I'm just going to show some clips here of us what I spoke to uh, in transition in terms of what our our plan is. And we'll talk a little bit about our spacing. So when we get possession of the ball, so this here, this is our four who, who got the rebound. Now she's someone for us that we're, we're okay with her attacking uh, with the dribble in transition. So then we have this player here is our, or typically our, our, our point guard or our ball handler. And 
if but if she gets the rebound, she can then replace her in her lane. So we would have our best guard attacker filling the right lane. We have our uh, third ball handler filling the opposite lane, the left lane. We want our first post or our, our first big to be running opposite the ball. So whatever side of the floor the ball is on, they're running opposite the ball. And she actually should be a little bit wider here. So we have a better angle to pass. But you see there just the, te the type of pace that we want. Okay, and we're trying to widen out and fill lanes. So this is, I mean, obviously the type of shot that you're trying to get, it's not always gonna be that easy. Um, so we'll get back to some of these in a little bit, but atta attacking in transition. Now, if that's taken away, um, we, we try to, in, in terms of simplifying, we want to be able, if we get stopped in transition, so if we don't get an easy score, what is our spacing to be able to flow quickly into something else? So we, we talk about having uh, a, a matchup. So we have a matchup guard and a matchup forward, and we, we space the floor and we move the ball in a way to make sure that we're getting one of those two people the ball and trying to get them on the same side of the floor so that they're, if, for example, if we put the ball into the, into our matchup post, then we're trying to get the matchup guard on the same side of the floor. So they can't, they can't dig down and it, it gives more space for that matchup post to play. Um, So here, in this is another transition. So this is our, for this lineup, this is our primary ball handler. Again, I have our matchup guard running this right lane, our non-matchup guard running the left lane. This post, we it, the first post, we want them right down the middle of the floor as they get to half, and then they wanna cut right through the elbow. So she does a pretty good job there. She wants to be opposite the ball. Now, depending on your spacing, a lot of teams will play four out here. So we're, we're again, we're not running any type of set out of transition. We wanna give them freedom to, to space and attack. So we would want these players to all flatten out. Okay, and, and in this case, our, our point guard goes a little bit early so it takes away a little bit of her space to attack. So we would prefer if, as they get to the, as they get to the three, give her a chance to get to her spot. So for us, she would flatten out all the way to the baseline. So we would have four across. And then as she attacks here, this defender ends up almost accident, accidentally helping because she went a little bit too early. But in terms of spacing to get up the floor, not too bad. So we're in white here. Again, we get defensive rebound. In this example, we don't get to our lanes very well. So, so in terms of where the ball is, this is, this is our first post. She should be opposite the ball, so we have an angle. But the but the guard, I think, I mean, she started to go that way because the ball is on this side of the floor. Okay, but if the ball changes sides, we have to try to change sides of the floor. And we want to get the ball to the middle of the floor. So as the prim as the primary ball handler, you want to be trying to go through the middle one third. So you can see here, this example of where our spacing kind of gets, we, we don't have great spacing and we get caught on the sideline, even though we're, we're open 
in spots, we can't, we aren't in a position to be able to make passes. So we end up having to take a tough shot. So we'll get into um, so, some of that, our half court stuff, I think as we get, as we show um, and talk about some of the skills and how they translate. So when we, when we play out of the, the um, quarter court, or if, if, whether it be out of transition or if we're running a set, the, the simplicity of it is that we're trying to, again, get the ball into our best player's hands. We may run very simple action to do that, but at, at this point, uh, we're, you know, at this, we're not really looking to run a whole bunch of screens and cuts when we can simply just get the, if we can get the ball in our best player's hands early and either, either find a matchup that we like so find a defender. So we may set we may set a screen to get a switch to get a defender a bet a better matchup for us. Or if we already like the matchup, we'll just get them the ball in a spot where they can attack. So for our perimeter players, that's you know that could be somewhere a lot around anywhere along the perimeter, depending on who that is. And then for our our post players. Um, you know, either on the elbows or at the at right at the front of the rim or on the blocks. Um, so some of the skills, the important skills to develop uh, to be successful offensively. So footwork, obviously, and this is something you know, as I've I've been around long enough now, coached long enough at this level that it's an area that um is there's less uh, there seems to be less and less attention paid to it like uh, athletes are coming in with with very poor footwork um, and we're spending a lot of time with them to try to fix that so important skills so in to get to get open footwork to get open so if we're one pass away from the ball whether we're inside or on the perimeter we can be open open to the ball and an open stance. And this allows us on the catch to be able to rip and go and, and attack. So we can do that with either foot. Um, if we're two or more passes away, we can, we, we're, the defense is not likely to be up in a passing lane. So we can have two feet to the basket. Um, and, and on our catch, we work a lot with our athletes having a permanent pivot foot. That's just our preference. It, it creates more consistency with your attack. Um, and it, and if you shot fake or jab and you're doing that with a permanent pivot foot, then you're, it's, it's more realistic um, in that fake to then be, to be able to, to attack or play. Uh, footwork to attack. So again, permanent pivot foot, this is important for being able to create space to, pass shoot or attack so well I'll, I'll show some clips in a second um just where you know we have some pretty good perimeter players who are able to to score and attack off the dribble uh, but before you know before you get into being a great attacker you need to be able to have great footwork so we'll we spend a lot of time just on very sim simple simple uh, catching with balance, jab, um, and and again that permanent pivot foot. I think the the most important skill uh, in terms of being a great offensive player is not I mean not necessarily dribbling the ball. In some ways, it's it's I think I have down here. It's also the the most overused skill like when when athletes are going and working with trainers like it's it's overdone um so we're when when i talk about dribbling i don't mean dribble moves necessarily but just the ability to create space with the dribble 
to either score or pass. And, and why is that important? So being able to get downhill. So whatever you're doing offensively, getting the ball into the paint has to be a priority. And, and, and if you, you know, shooting is obviously important, but if you don't have people on your team that can get by somebody on the dribble, you're, you're not going to create a lot of opportunities for shooters. So it, you know, having somebody who can get downhill and get into the paint and create space with a dribble, um, uh, as, as we see here, it, it more fouls are going to occur as the ball gets, gets into the paint, a higher sh field goal percentage, partly because you, if you're getting into the paint consistently, you're going to get lots of shots at the rim. Uh, you're going to have more, more shooters and cutters will be open. So if you get, if the ball is getting into the paint, you're likely drawing a second defender, which is then going to allow uh, you to kick the ball out to shooters and they're going to have more space and time to shoot the ball uh, or create a long closeout where they can then attack again. Uh, and if the ball's again, if you're getting downhill and the ball is getting into the paint again you're bringing you're causing rotation so on a shot there's going to be more opportunities for rebounds so we'll just show uh again some clips of us and the importance of being able to get by people off the dribble so here the athlete here with the ball she's our best shooter um so teams teams are going to respect that Okay, so she uses that to advantage, her advantage with a, with a shot fake to be able to attack and get by. So she draws two defenders. And this is then, she is able to get by that second defender to score or draw a foul. Okay, again, I mean, it, it at times can be an off ball screen, but we'll use ball screen as most teams are these days to try to get a, a better matchup. So we get a switch here. Our, the athlete with the ball recognizes. So we flatten everybody out and she uses simple. So as you, as you can see here, she's not, she's not really going to, she makes one dribble move, one simple dribble move, and then create space, get straight downhill, and gets to the rim for a layup. Okay, again, we don't we don't create a switch on that first screen, but she fakes she fakes opposite and then is able to try to create space. She's not able to do that, but she gets eventually downhill and gets into the paint. And then once again, we use, a, we use simple, but effective, dribble moves to be able to get by and score and get downhill. So we'll talk about this a little bit more, just the importance of being a threat to shoot the ball before you attack. So again, just being able to attack and create space off the dribble it has to be, you, you need to be, you need to have players that are able to do it. Okay. And then also able to then make plays once they draw, draw two defenders.
I feel like I've been doing a lot of talking. Does anyone have any questions yet before we uh, go on? Okay. Um, so I, we'll, we'll talk about, um, again, as I mentioned before, um, the ball handling aspect of it is, is it's important that it's we're especially when we're teaching younger athletes, I, I coached at younger levels for a long time. Um, you know, all the way from grade four through, through grade nine for a number of years. And when, you know, obviously they're watching the NBA and, and um, WNBA even a little bit in terms of uh, the types of what the, or the style of play, you know, that's where, what most of them are seeing. And, and when I, when we talk about the importance of dribbling, it's, it's not, the over dribbling it's it's used to separate from the defense and then um with that uh the importance of also being able to pass the ball and shoot the ball so in terms of shooting i'm not i'm not going to talk about shooting in terms of the skill itself um but just the idea that within your offense everybody must be a threat to score on every catch. Um, and, and, and particularly in, in transition, if, if we have our best shooters running uh, the floor and looking to attack and looking to shoot the ball, it's, it's very hard for defense in scramble situations to recover and know uh, and not uh, if whoever is catching the ball is catching and looking to, to be a threat, even if they aren't the best shooter on your team, it's, it's hard for defense in a scramble situation to, to not react to a shot fake or not, um, not honor the fact that they are looking to shoot the ball first. So, I mean, we, we have athletes on our team who feel like they're not the best shooters and they don't always look to shoot and it just makes them easier to guard. So Every time you catch the ball, put the ball in shooting position and be a threat to shoot first. And, and footwork's impo- important with that. Um, your footwork and um, your shot fake must replicate what, it, what your footwork um, and shooting form would be if you were actually going to shoot the ball. Um, so have your feet ready and have your eyes uh, up and and be a threat a lot of um a lot of our spacing uh uh we you know we'll play with we play with three guards on the perimeter so there's lots of space to attack and on on kickouts before like especially at the younger levels i think one of the one of the bad habits that players have. And we, we have players that do this too, is on a kick out, they, they want to attack and they will do so without first being a threat to shoot the ball. So take a look. And then if you, if, if you want to drive, you have to first shot fake. Okay. This is going to, this is, it draws the defense and allows, it also allows the, the players who have moved so if there was an initial attack and the ball got kicked to you, it gives time for those players to get uh, back to space. Um, so shot fake so important if if you want to attack. So you're you're always ready to shoot the ball. You can't you can't recover from um, not being ready to shoot the ball. If you're if you're not ready to shoot and the defense closes out. And you're, you admit that opportunity may be, may be taken away, but if you're always ready to shoot, then you can take that shot in rhythm. And then if you want to attack, you need to shot fake. Um, passing. So obviously, um, 
a very important skill. And I think in, in our country, one of the least developed skills that we have. Um, so a, a very important one, uh, the, the different types of working on different types of passes is important, uh, the technique and skill. But I mean, I think the best way to develop passing is, you know, we, we would ask coaches um, all around the world when we, when we were playing in Europe with the, with the cadet team, the cadet national team. And we, uh, we were asking the, um, the Spanish coach, like what they do, cause their athletes, their style of play in Europe was, was much different. And they all were very skilled and much more creative with, with the ball and how they pass the ball and score the ball. And, and uh, I mean, it, it's a, not surprisingly, it's a simple answer. They just, they, they play more often. They're allowed to be more creative at, a, at younger ages. Um, and I think um, there's an emphasis put on passing, whereas um, maybe not so much here. Um, spacing. So, so in terms of team play, understanding spacing um, and being, doesn't have to be complicated, but understanding where you need to be at, at any given time. So where, what is the, what is the plan for your team um, on dribble penetration? Um, from the wing, from the top, what's your plan when the ball gets passed into the post? Where, where are you spacing? Play, in, in, in order to be a good passing team, your players need to know where the ball is going to be um, and where other, pe where other players are going to be. Uh, ball screen, what's your spacing on, on ball screen and also in transition. So the, these are, I mean, we can talk about what, what our plan is in terms of spacing, but it just, again, it has to work with, uh, with the players that you have. And then I think um, just having a plan, being organized and having a plan is, is, is so important. And it just it, having, having that for your athletes allows, puts them in a, in a situations where they can have success as opposed to randomness in terms of where they should be. So we'll watch a few, um, a few more clips of our team. So hopefully you can get an idea of our spacing and what, what we're trying to do. So again, so we get a stop. So we're not looking to run a set. We're looking to get the ball to the three point line in three seconds. So either on the dribble or on a kick ahead. So we do that. We have our, our matchup forward at the front of the rim, our matchup guard with the ball. So we're in a good position. So this player here has freedom to attack right away if she has a lane, but if everybody is not back in position, we want her to wait. Because otherwise you see here, these two aren't back. So as she attacks, she's going there. We're basically three versus five right now because these, these two aren't yet in the play yet. Okay, but we do, our spacing is pretty good. Otherwise, because she, once she doesn't get it, she's got to, she's got to exit the paint. We have three on the perimeter and then even though we get stopped, our four has sp space to dive. So we don't make anything out of it, but, but we, we have lots of space to play there in transition. Okay, again, match up post here, match up guard on the strong side. Lots of space. We want this player to be wide, so our, our uh, Primary ball handler has lots of space to attack off the dribble. So we get to the paint one time, draw and kick. Not great spacing here. 
and we get stuck. So late clock, we want the ball in one of our primary scorers' hands to be able to attack and score. And we get exactly that. Again, in transition, so we're just looking to flatten out and draw and kick. So we get, if we, if we can't score, we want to make sure we get balanced and get to two feet. And everybody knows exactly where they should be. So she should, she should really have four options here of people to pass to. Okay, we force a long closeout on this kick out. Okay, she's, she's one of the best shooters in the league, so she doesn't necessarily always have to shot fake because she's such a threat to shoot the ball. So she gets by, draws the second defender, and then we get a wide open three. Okay, we get to the paint. We probably hear she's a very good shooter too. We probably want to let her get one more step before putting it on the floor. And then if she never comes, then we get set, we just shoot the ball. So we go a little bit too early, but we still get a paint touch, draw a second defender, wide open three. So we talked uh, at the very beginning in terms of work. So this, this would be what we call 21, but it's just an open stance when you were one pass away from the ball. And in this case, we put ourselves in a good position to score. Um, I think those are all the clips that we had. So um, in terms of what I was, I wanted to cover that was, uh, that was what I had for the presentation, but I was hoping to open it up to, um, some questions. Ah, can you, I have a question on the chat. Oh no, it's a direct, it's sorry. That's a private message. I won't ask that one out loud. Um, does anyone else have, anyone have any questions? Coach, I had a question. Yeah. Um, you talked about, um, you know, just dribbling to create space. And like, you know, for the players, they're watching either WNBA or NBA and they see people really working the handle. Um, do you ever recommend, you know, certain players they can watch? Like, are you going back in time for like John Stockton and kind of just like creating like, you know, um, very simplistic dribbling, like you said, right? Nothing over the top, but you're creating space and you're able to cut and get to the basket as well. Yeah, I think, I think the important thing is to, I, it's, it's so important to watch basketball and try to find players that it, try to duplicate or replicate um, moves or things that they do. Like, I know that that's how I fell in love with basketball was just going and watching university basketball and then starting to watch it on TV. But uh, Maybe the mo maybe what's important is that they, uh, as they start to get a little bit older, and definitely for our players, like try to try to compare yourself to somebody that says doesn't have to be a similar level, but it doesn't make a lot of sense for our athletes to try to do what James Harden's doing. Maybe it makes more sense for them to be watching. Um, Sue Bird or, um, or other, or NCAA players or players in the, their own league. Like we, we will sometimes take a look and watch film of players that are other players in youth sports as, as an example of, of different things they can try to do. So I, I think it's, I think it's a great way to motivate athletes. Um, 
and it's an important part of becoming a great competitor is is watching basketball and and learning from others so just may just maybe the nba i think maybe can kind of it's it's um it's definitely a different style of play um and and in in north america unfortunately we don't get to see a lot of a lot of the best basketball like in terms of in terms of team play Mm -hmm. um like that that you see in europe and that type of stuff so maybe not replicating what's happening there but that you can definitely learn some stuff from watching yeah definitely thank you Mm -hmm. i'm surprised i don't have a, a dave smart question i usually get asked about dave smart about about once a week (laughs) okay i think coach if there aren't any questions and if you have anything like if you want to finish off with anything we'll we'll let you go because we don't want to take up much of your time yeah no i i think just a, a thank you to ontario basketball and i'm i've been out i've born and raised in in guelph but uh been out west for a little while so just happy to be back in Ontario and thanks for having me on and happy holidays to everybody thank you thank you for being here we appreciate it and thank you for everyone and all the coaches who joined us awesome happy holidays thank you coach again yeah thanks so much really appreciate it